Welcome back to week two of Made for This. We are on the topic of faith. We were in this series right before the coronavirus hit, and uh, I, I, I kind of felt like I had to switch it up and go back to the roots of what we built this church on, on the faith message. Last week we learned um, the biblical definition of faith out of Hebrews 11, verse 1. And it says this, Now faith is the substance of of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we ask the question, what is the substance of your faith? What is the tangible product of your faith? What is your faith attached to? And I think the teaching of faith can be very confusing, that it can be perceived as psychosomatic or mind over matter, right? Even the definition of it can be a little confusing. I, I get it. I see the point uh, here in Hebrews 11.1. 1. It's a confusing verse. The strange thing about faith is that, check this out. The size of your faith, check this out, ready? The size of your faith or the amount of faith a person has has never been the problem. The size of your faith or the amount of faith a person has has never been a problem. You don't have to have mountain-sized faith to move mountains. It only takes a little bit. It only takes a little bit of faith. In Matthew 17, 20, Jesus is speaking and he said, because of your unbelief, you weren't able to do this. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So firstly, Jesus says, if you had any faith at all, you could move mountains. Then he gives us an illustration to how little faith we need. He said, if you had faith as the grain of a mustard seed, which is almost microscopic, if I put a mustard seed on my finger, you wouldn't be able to see it on the camera right now. He says, if you had any faith at all, you could speak to mountains, and they would move from here to there. The size of your faith is not the question. The question is, how much substance do you have? How much substance do you have? Not the faith, but how much substance. Ready? Watch. A little bit of faith connected to significant substance produces great results. A little bit of faith connected to a significant substance produces great results. A lot of faith connected to insufficient substances produces no results. Faith is the substance it's attached to. Okay? So let's take a look at this for a second. Let's answer this question, what faith is not? Okay, what faith is not? Faith is not how you feel. Faith is not how you feel. It's not an emotion. You could feel faithless and still have it. Woo! You could feel faithless and still have it. I know this is going to get me a little bit of trouble here when I talk about this. You could feel that you're the most full of faith, that you have faith for everything, and yet have none of it. Faith is not an emotion, because emotions shift based upon the information we receive. We had no idea about a coronavirus until we received information about coronavirus. And then the more news and the more things we watch, the more information we receive, it changed emotions to what was happening around us. Emotions shift based on information you receive. Faith does not. Faith does not shift based on information you receive. Hebrews 11 defines faith. It describes faith. It builds faith and it demonstrates who can have faith. We go down this list in Hebrews 11 in Bible school, and, and my dad taught me this was the hall of fame of faith. And there's some people on this list in the hall of fame of faith that I wouldn't have on my list of heavy hitters if I was writing a list of faith-based people. 
Let's look at this, okay? So the first two I can agree with. It says, by faith, Abel. Abel was the son of Adam and Eve. I could see that one. Enoch. Enoch was a great man. I got no beef with these first two people. Then it says, by faith, Noah. Noah was a serious drunk, and he did some embarrassing things. Abraham, he lied. He had a child with someone that wasn't his wife. It says, Sarah, by faith, she doubted. Then we jump down this list. It says, and by faith, Rahab, she was a prostitute. And God lists all these people. And watch what he says here in Hebrews eleven thirty nine. 39. And all of these, having obtained a good testimony through faith. All of these have obtained a good testimony through faith. Guess what? There's hope for you. <laughs> There's hope for you. There's hope for you. There's hope for me. I, I can tell you sometimes my faith doesn't feel all that strong. But he says if you have faith. And I can tell you I'm not as bad as some of these people on this list. So there's hope, right? There's hope for you and me. No matter what your backstory is, God is writing his story about your life. There's hope for you. So listen, God, I'll tell you a little bit about faith. God who is not seen uses things that are not seen to create things that are seen. God who is not seen uses things that are not seen to create things that are seen. And let's look how this is demonstrated in Hebrews 11.3. And I don't know if you knew all this was in here, right? It says this, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. In another translation, it says that the worlds were formed. The universe was formed by words not seen to produce something that was seen. This has been God's method of creation from the beginning of time. And this is how faith works, right? Faith is a thing that's not seen. It's just known. It's just there. I have faith. I believe. And I can attach it to things that are not seen to produce a crop or produce a harvest or produce a blessing that is seen. Mm. The word worlds here simply means universe. By faith we understand that the universe were framed by the words of God. He spoke it into existence. At his word, something that was not seen, the universe was created, something that is seen. I'll be honest, I've never seen any further than what I can see in an airplane. Okay, I've never taken one of those telescopes and looked into deep space, but I know that you can do that. I believe that there are things out there beyond that. Okay, the Bible tells us here, galaxies and universes, the worlds were framed. God has used this same formula from the beginning of time to produce things that you can see from matter that you cannot see. You cannot see God. I can't see the universe beyond looking up and seeing into the sky without some sort of telescope. But I can see the world that was created for me to live in. I don't understand it all. But I have to understand my part. My part. So I'll talk to you about today. My part. What is your part? What is your part to play in this faith walk, in this faith message? Well, to be honest, I don't always understand my part. I don't always understand the Bible when I sit down to read it. Anybody else have that in their life? Try to read something, you sit down and you're going through it. And Here's what I want to say today. You, you don't always have to understand your part. You don't always have to understand the Bible. Do you trust the author who wrote it? Do you trust the author 
who wrote it. And this is what I want to build into today. And we've got four ideas going. We're going to bring it all together in a story in a second. Do you trust the author who wrote it? So I can read a Bible that I sometimes don't understand because I trust the author. And that's my part. My part is to have faith in God. My part is to trust Jesus Christ. My part is to trust that he wrote it for me and that it is for his good pleasure and it is for my protection and safety that I do what the word of God says. Let me illustrate. My son loves coming into this family room after service and he'll run up the stairs and he'll run to the middle of the stage and he'll jump off the stage and he'll say, Daddy, catch me. Daddy, catch me. And we play this game and I turn around and I grab him in the air and it's a lot of fun. I've done it with all my children. But it wasn't always that way. It wasn't always that way that he would run up the stairs and jump up. In the beginning, I would have to pick him up and put him on the stage. I'd place him up here on the stage. And he'd be standing here on the edge of the stage, and I'd say, Liam, jump. And he'd, he'd do this little thing, right? Liam, jump. He hasn't acquired faith in my words yet. He hasn't acquired faith in my word yet that just because I told him to jump, I will catch him. So he'll stand on the stage and he'd be, Daddy, come closer. Come closer, Daddy. And the closer I would draw to him, if I drew near to him, his confidence would rise. Now, the first few times, he didn't jump. He pretty much just kind of fell forward and I'd catch him. But the more he jumped and the more I caught him, the more his trust and his faith increased. Now, I always knew he could have made the far jump. I always knew. I had faith in him. I had trusted him. I've seen him jump from the couch. But this stage is four feet high. This is a big jump. And the more he would jump, the more confidence he would have. Do you trust the author of the word of God? Do you trust God at his word? That his word says what it says. That he will catch you. That he will never drop you. That he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will stick closer to you than a brother. He will hold you with his righteous right hand. Do you believe him at his word? you got to believe him at his word. Do you trust the author of the word? Do you trust what the Bible says in every one of your situations? It took some time between me and Liam. I'd say, Liam, I will catch you. I will. I will. I will. I will. If you ever take some time and read the New Testament, there's all these scriptures now. Where God says, I will bless you, I will keep you, I will protect you, I will hold you, I will, I will, I will. All you got to do is draw close to him. Draw him in a little bit closer. Maybe, maybe you don't trust him for the five foot jump today. Draw a little closer. Draw a little bit closer. Mm. As I would draw closer, Liam's confidence would rise. The closer I got, the more confident he got. When you know that God is as close as the mention of his name, it brings some confidence. David, King David writes to us, I've, I was young and then I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed out begging bread. When we hear things like this, a man like David who could tell from the beginning of his life to the end of his life, I've seen a whole lot of things, but one thing I've never seen is the righteous forsaken or the seed out begging bread. That can 
let faith expand within me. Today, like I said earlier, Liam will run up the stairs, run across the stage, and he will jump off this stage without me even being ready for it. He is so confident today that I will catch him, that he will jump before I have even turned around to catch him. Today, Liam invites the opportunity to exercise the faith. At first, I had to initiate all of the faith moments. I had to put him on the stage. I had to do all. But today, because of the confidence and the relationship and the trust that we have, he now seeks out opportunities to exercise the jump of faith. Woo! Like I said earlier, David, he writes to us, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seen out begging bread. You know what he's saying? I've never seen God drop anybody. I've never seen God drop anybody. I've seen a lot of people jump. I've seen them fall, but I've never seen God drop. Anyway, I've never seen them out begging for bread. This is good. Do you trust God? That not only that he can catch you, but he will. There's a difference between those two. Can you right now invite him to catch you maybe in a fearful moment? Maybe you can allow him to catch you thinking ways that are not how he wants you to be thinking right now. Can he catch you in this fearful moment? Put you back up in the right place. My son today has faith to jump off this stage based on previous exercises of faith. Here's my big idea today. Faith is measured by your feet, not your feelings. Faith is measured by your feet, not your feelings. I'm going to say it again. Faith is measured by your feet, not your your feelings. The proof of Liam's faith, the substance of Liam's faith is that he jumped. We could sit back all day. I know God's going to catch me. I know God's got me. I know God's got me, but we haven't jumped yet. <laughs> the proof of it is the action. Is the action. Are you doing What the word says. Are you jumping when he says jump? Woo. His actions demonstrated his faith. Not what he said, not what he felt, but what he actually did. Let me ask you this question today. I'm bringing all this together. Which way are your feet moving? Which way are your feet moving? Where are your decisions taking you. I mentor, I coach a lot of young people. I ask them all the time, what do you want to be? Where are you going with your life? And they'll tell me something and I'll say, are the decisions that you're making right now taking you in that direction? And normally they give me a look like, huh? Because a lot of times they're not. We say one thing, but our feet are moving in a different direction. Are your feet moving in the direction? Where are your decisions taking you? You can be in faith even if your feelings are heading in the opposite direction. You can be in faith even if your feelings are heading in the opposite direction as long as your feet are moving towards faith. Ooh, okay. You can be faithless even though you're telling everybody how much faith you have. I've, I've got so much faith. I believe in God. I believe in God. But really, deep down inside, you're not. You just know a lot of Bible verses. You're quoting scripture without actual faith. Because faith equals movement. I don't care what you're saying. What are you doing with what you're saying? That's faith. 
That's what faith is. When you move in concert with a big God, you're exercising big faith. When you move in concert with a big God, you're exercising big faith. Just like Liam's faith in me to catch him, do you have faith in your Father God to catch you in this season of uncertainty? Do you have faith in him that even though right now you may feel like he's not close, that if you jump, he'll grab a hold of you? We'd like to pray with you today. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this time in your word. Lord, I pray today that we're encouraged to walk by faith and not by sight. That we would move in faith, not by our feelings. I thank you, Lord, today that you would continue to reveal to us that you are right there, that you are close to us. Your arms are wide and you've never dropped a single one of your children. You've caught them every time. I pray that that faith rises in your heart today. I pray, God, that, that, we could, that, that the word today would touch right where we are, right what we need to hear today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here today or online with us today and you've never made, an oppor- uh, made a decision for Jesus Christ, we'd like to pray a prayer of salvation with you. And when we're done with that prayer, would you hit that raise hand button on our website that says that you made that decision for Christ today? The prayer goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. See you next week.